I want to talk to you just a few more minutes about my own transplant. I was very, very lucky that whenever I graduated from nursing school, I actually had a family kidney disease that I already knew about called polycystic kidney disease. So my family and I knowing about this disease already was a huge advantage. So I was able to prepare mentally and a little bit physically of knowing that the eventual, and eventually the day would come where I might need dialysis and transplant for myself. So that greatly influenced the field of nursing that I went into. I started off in a hemodialysis unit and I loved it. And I hoped that I would never have to go on dialysis, but if I did, I was gonna try to learn everything that I needed to know about it and get prepared. So after I worked in a dialysis center for a few years, I worked at the National Kidney Foundation, then I worked with disease management patients, and then I went to transplant in 2000. And boy, that really helped me, as well as a lot of my family members, to get prepared and know about kidney transplant. And when I say over and over again, in the previous section about how you can get transplanted before you ever go on dialysis. This is something that I try to tell to everyone that I meet on the street, that I sit on next to on a plane, if I'm going somewhere. It's just something that's not very well known and it's definitely not well publicized, I don't feel like. You know, heart disease and breast cancer, I feel like are well publicized on the Cheerios boxes, but I've really never seen kidney disease on any Cheerios boxes or anything like that. So trying to get the word out. So I knew that with progressive kidney disease, I might need to get a transplant someday. Working in the transplant field really was helpful for me. I was able to help a lot of my um, family members. So they, a lot of my family members actually got listed and transplanted before needing dialysis as well. Finally, the time came that my kidney function was getting worse and I knew that it was gonna be imminent. So I got listed on the deceased donor transplant list in December of 2013. And again, I was very lucky to live in the Midwest where in 1985, they had decided to look for other options for people who had B blood types. B blood type is not very common in the United States. Only about 15% of patients have B blood types and they can only receive from other Bs or other Os. So people who were waiting on the list and were B blood type were having to wait longer. So unfortunately, I was a B and I was living in this area and we we're working on A2, also called non-A1 donor options. And I was very, very fortunate that my name got up on the list and I got a call for a deceased donor kidney transplant in the spring of 2014. I do extremely well with my kidney transplant. I'm very fortunate. I take a few pills every day. Whenever you first get transplanted, it is many, many more, like 15 to 20 new pills a day, but that quickly goes away and becomes very manageable. We are, as transplant patients, at higher risks for infections and cancers. And so I go and get my regularly scheduled screenings and mammogram and pap smear and vaccines as they're regularly scheduled. I go to my doctor. It's really important that you follow up with your healthcare team on a regular basis and do your lab work and take your medications and that is how you're gonna be successful and have a very long life with a kidney transplant, whether deceased or a living donor. Thank you.